Hey, what's up you guys, it's Nassim here. And today I'll be giving you guys a first look at the brand new M1 iPad Pro. Now there's two things that I myself have always liked about the iPad Pros when it came to personal use, and that's its mobility and its productivity. The fact that I can get a whole bunch of work done on it while also being able to carry it anywhere I want was always a huge plus for me when it came to iPads as a whole. And that is the reason why this iPad Pro specifically caught my attention because not only is it the best tablet on the market, it exceeded past any expectation I had when it came to its productivity while also still remaining just as mobile. Now, the first thing that we must talk about when it comes to the iPad is the hardware that puts it above any other tablet, and that's the M1 chip. Now, the M1 chip has an eight core CPU, and if you divide the use of each, you have four for performance and four for efficiency. The M1 chip also has an eight core GPU and a 16 core neural engine. And just so you guys know, this is the exact same processor that can be found in a 13 inch base model MacBook Pro. Meaning that if you are someone who wants to do heavy editing or want the portability of an iPad, then this is the exact one for you. Now, although the iPad is an extremely powerful device, the power doesn't stop there because it also has an amazing catalog of RAM and storage. Now, if you want to get the cheapest model, you will have eight gigs worth of RAM along with 128 gigs worth of storage. This iPad also comes with every single storage option known to men, including 256 gigs, 512 gigs, one terabyte, and oh yeah, two terabytes worth of storage with 16 gigabytes worth of RAM. In the moment that I saw that spec sheet, my jaw dropped because this is the greatest list as far as storage that I've seen on any device. And to give you guys an idea, 16 gigs worth of RAM is something that you will see on a 16 inch MacBook Pro, let alone two terabytes. And to test it out, I will open a whole bunch of apps and continuously swipe throughout the interface to see how the 16 gigs held up and it didn't disappoint one bit. There was no lag whatsoever, and it felt like an even smoother experience thanks to the 120 hertz refresh rate. Now, when looking at the display on the M1 iPad Pro, we have a liquid retina display that has a resolution of 2388 by 1668 p with 264 pixels per inch, which is a slightly better resolution than last year's model. And to give you guys an idea, here's the display from my point of view. This is what it looks like on max brightness. Here's what it looks like on medium brightness and here's what it looks like on lower brightness. Now also looking from my point of view, you can see how colorful everything is, especially when you're playing a video game or watching a video that has a lot of colors. The display always has this consistency even with the home screen all the way to the basic app and messenger. Now when it comes to the build quality on the iPad Pro, I would definitely say it's heavier than last year's model for the simple fact that, you know, they actually had to add more weight because of the M1 chip. But besides that, everything else felt the same compared to last year's from the matte finish to the quad speakers to the buttons. Everything else was exactly the same, which is definitely a good thing because I myself have always considered iPad Pros to be of high quality in the build department. Now getting more into the physicality of the M1 iPad, the 11 inch version has a height of 9.74 inches while the width is about 7.02 inches and it has a thickness of 5.9 millimeters which is about two millimeters thicker than last year's and is a small yet noticeable difference. And from my point of view, you can get sort of an idea of how it looks in the hand when you're holding it. Now getting a better look at the iPad, at the top we have the two speakers with the microphone in the middle along with the power button. Then on the right we have the volume rockers and magnetic connector for the Apple Pencil. On the bottom we have our other two speakers to complete the quad audio set. And on the back and front we have the cameras. Now the cameras are pretty much the same as the one on last year's iPad. But one difference this year is that there is a brand new ultra wide for the back, which is pretty cool. But like I always say, the cameras on an iPad are basically an afterthought. And I will be getting more into the camera in my full review, but I wanted to show you guys some photos that I've took with the camera once I first got my hands on it. Now, although this year's M1 iPad Pro was not as loud when it came to presentation, it definitely showed when it came to performance. And for that, I can easily crown this iPad Pro the untouched king of tablets and I doubt that anything can snatch that crown away anytime soon. And if you guys made it to the end of this video, I would like to say thank you for sticking around and don't forget to like this video and subscribe, it will be very appreciated. And as far as social media, you can follow me on Twitter and Instagram and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace.